Welcome, Magic fans. I'm Lady Danger from the Command Zone podcast, here to help kick off the preview season for Magic's latest set, The Brothers War. This set, we're joining Magic's modern day heroes as they delve into one of the most important events in the history of the multiverse, searching the past for a way to thwart the Phyrexian threat in the present. Now we've got a lot to show you today, so let's get right into it with a look at how the designers and artists took inspiration from Magic's past as they brought this pivotal moment in history to life. One of the difficulties of telling a story in Magic is that it's non-linear, right? Um, you get 15 or 16 little windows into the setting and the story that we're trying to tell. So in this case, we're telling a story that spans multiple generations. It's somewhere between 40 and 60 years of history on Dominaria. You'll see you know, giant mechs, you'll see trenches, you'll see Thran ruins, you'll see environments that if you're a fan, you know will be Dominaria, but will be Dominaria kind of like you haven't seen it, you've only heard it described. The Brothers War takes place something like 4,000 years in the past. One of the things that we want people to see upon opening a booster pack is giant mechs. You'll know right away that you are in the Brothers War. We'll see those mechs in the landscape at their full strength and glory, marching across the world as one would have seen it during the Brothers War. We're going to be printing the remaining four pain lands that were not in Dominaria United. They are Brushlands, Underground River, Llanowar Wastes, and Battlefield Forge. For Brushlands, that one depicts a moment that is in the High War. You see Thran ruins in the background. To further ground it in the second act of the Brothers War, we have the trench running straight through it, which distinguishes it from sort of a third act land, like Underground River, where you can see the wreckage and ruins of machines from both of the Brothers' army, along with these characteristic sort of caustic, decaying power stone moats. The earth itself is polluted. For Battlefield Forge, half of the land is on fire. There's no more factory that is mass producing things. They are collecting slag heaps of scrapped machines and melting them down on the battlefield itself. I believe this one is set somewhere in the Great Desert. The last of the four Painlands, Lanoir Wastes, it was the most difficult one from a creative perspective because Lanoir becomes a wasteland after the Brothers War. Lanoir is set on a completely different continent. You can see in the background, there's this burst of white light and the clouds are sort of deforming around it. That is the moment that Earth is detonating the Silex, we see the forest of Lanoir the day it will become a wasteland. One of the ways that we're, we're returning to Magic's past is through our blueprint treatment, uh, which we are taking a selection of cards and we are using them to sort of reimagine through the lens of the Brothers' War in kind of the heads of some of the marquee characters, Urza, Mishra, their assistants, Thanos and Ashnod. The art for these cards, these are meant to be pages out of their sketchbook. It's sort of their marginalia illustrations of how they imagine certain artifacts that they've either encountered, designed or dreamed. For example, we have Ashnod's Altar, which was, I believe, first printed in Antiquity which gets wrapped up into the entire canon of the Brothers War. We've redone that one with our blueprint treatment, which is showing pages from Ashnod's own journal, designing the altar and, and imagining how it would work and the different functions that help her to create her you know, hideous amalgamations of, of human and, and machine. We also have Ornithopter. You know, there are many different printings of Ornithopter. We wanted to run with one that we can imagine as Urza designing sort of an early war model. When I wrote the concept for this card, I was sort of imagining it to be the one that the character Rendell uses to escape Krug during the siege, uh, along with all of Urza's documents. For Goblin Charbelcher, this is something that, say Thanos was on an expedition somewhere in Tercier and encountered goblins stuffing chickens and nails and bombs and other goblins into a cannon, firing it and saying, here is our goblin charbelcher. These are our curious, brilliant people. They're curious about it and they want to know more about it. And that's what we hope to show with these cards. Now, before we look at how the team approached revisiting these iconic characters, we need to understand what their cards actually do. So first, let's take a moment to hear from editor Matt Tabak about the mechanics of the Brothers War. So the Brothers War is, of course, one of the most famous stories in all of Magic. And a big part of it is the act of creating these gigantic war machines, artifact creatures that are dotting the landscape and bringing about destruction and terror. But what if we took these giant war machines and kind of broke them down to an earlier version, a prototype, a smaller version of itself that had the same abilities, but maybe wasn't quite as large. What if we could combine that into one card? So you could either choose a smaller version or a larger version, depending on where you were in the game. Well, prototype. New prototype cards are artifact creatures that offer two choices, and your opponents won't like either of them. Each prototype card has a divided text box, 
At the top is the prototype ability, and an alternate mana cost and power and toughness, characteristics it'll keep until it leaves the battlefield. If you cast Phyrexian Fleshgorger for 1 BB, it'll be a 3-3 black artifact creature. If you cast it for 7, you'll unleash its full might as a colorless 7-5 artifact creature. Either way, it has the other abilities displayed here. Unless they're being cast, prototypes off the battlefield have their normal characteristics, so Phyrexian Fleshgorger is a colorless 7-5 in your library. Early game or late, your war machines will be ready. The Brothers' War is an ancient war seen through modern eyes, and these massive war machines need power somehow, and that's Power Stones. Coveted by both sides, Power Stones accelerate your mana production. Power Stones accelerate your mana production, leading to explosive late-game plays. A Power Stone token is an artifact token that can tap for one colorless mana. Now that mana can't be spent to cast a non-artifact spell, but and that's power. Late. Prototypes off the battlefield have their normal characteristics, so Phyrexian Fleshgorger is a colorless 7-5 in your library. Early game or late, your war machines will be ready. The Brothers' War is an ancient war seen through modern eyes, and these massive war machines need power somehow, and that's Power Stones. Coveted by both sides, Power Stones accelerate your mana production, leading to explosive late-game plays. A Power Stone token is an artifact token that can tap for one colorless mana. Now that mana can't be spent to cast a non-artifact spell, but it can be spent on anything else. Artifact spells, activated abilities, even ones of non-artifacts, costs imposed by triggered abilities, costs to attack or block, and so on. No mage ever had problems finding uses for extra mana, and we trust you won't either. And the Brothers War has two high-profile returning mechanics that players have loved before and we're positive they're going to love again. The first is Unearth, where players are going to be digging up old, discarded creatures and artifacts for one last attack on the battlefield. One last chance to wreak some havoc. Unearth is an activated ability that can be activated only if the card that has it, such as Ashnod's Harvester, is in the graveyard. Unearth can be activated only as a sorcery, but that's okay, because in a lot of cases, you're unearthing creatures to attack with them. To help, the unearthed permanent gains haste. At the beginning of the next end step, exile it. If it would leave the battlefield before then, exile it instead. It was fun while it lasted, but nothing, life or even unlife, lasts forever. The other returning mechanic is